So let's take a look at question number 31. A jeweler is cutting stones into triangles. Determine the number of triangles she can form from the given side and angle measures. Spelling mistakes galore. M-E-A-S-U-R-E-S. -E -E then solve the triangles. Round to the nearest tenth. Okay, so you know right away you can draw the triangle to see what kind of triangle you have, right? So again, it doesn't really matter where you put the A, B, and C because in the end, it's all going to be the same. But just remember, opposite the, the angle A is going to be side A, okay, which is 27. Opposite angle B is going to be side B, which is 30. And opposite angle C is going to be side C. And it says the measure of angle A is 55 degrees. So that's that angle right there. Okay, so what kind of triangle do we have? Well, let's see, I have an angle side side, but we don't have ASS, right? But we have a S. S A. So we gotta go the opposite way. We have a SSA triangle, which means we gotta use what? The law of sines. Okay? So uh, but remember we put a star when it came to SSA, right? Because we knew that this was a special case. So the law of sine was just about opposite angles and opposite sides, and uh, we have to use sine. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do right now. We're going to go ahead and find the measure of angle B just because um, I already have measure of angle A and the opposite side, so I'm going to use that to start off. And then the only other measurement that I have as of right now is side B. So, of course, I want to find the measure of angle B next, right? So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take you to a new page to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it up. Our original triangle had angle, angle A is 55, opposite side is 22. So this is for measure of angle B. And so sine 55 degrees over, the side length was 27, and that equals sine B. And then uh, the length of side B was just B. No, B is 30, right? So I'm going to go ahead and change that to 30. So then we're going to cross multiply, right? So it's going to be 30 times sine 55 degrees, and that is equal to 27 times sine B. So we know that what we're looking for is B. So we're going to divide both sides by 27, okay? Now I'm left with sine B, is equal to all of that. 30 sine 55 over 27. Okay? So, but what are we trying to look for? Are we trying to look for sine B or the measure of angle B? The measure of angle B, right? So how do we find the measure of angle B from sine B? Yes, we have to find the inverse, okay? So the inverse of all of that, that's going to be the measure of angle B. So that would be 30 times sine 55 degrees over 27. So then what are we going to do? We're going to just definitely put this in the calculator, right? So again, I'm going to go to my handy dandy decimals calculator. I want to make sure that I go in here and uh, everything is in degree mode already. And then now I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Okay, so to put sine, the inverse of sine, I have to actually click on functions, which is right here. And then all these are inverses, right? So the inverse of sine is going to be arc sine. Or you can just type up arc sine. It doesn't really matter, okay? And then you have to put 30. And then you can just type sine 55 divided by 27. Oops, that was 37. 27. And then... What do you get? You get 65.5 because the number after the 5 is a 2, so we can just drop it all, right? So 65.5 is our answer. So let's go back. So measure of angle B is equal to 65.5 degrees, okay? So now if you go back to the triangle, now we got measure of angle B, which is 65.5 degrees. So then we got angle A, angle B, so how are you going to find angle C? 
Well, you know that when we add all three angles up in a triangle, they always add up to be 180 degrees, right? That's the triangle sum theorem. So what we're going to do is we're going to add these two and subtract it from 180. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got to go to a new page again because I'm out of space. So to find the measure of angle C, we're going to go 180 minus... 65.5 plus 55 degrees, right? So that's going to be 180 minus 120.5. And that's going to give me 59.5 degrees. <gasps> that was the bell. So now we found measure of angle C, which is 59.5. So I'm going to put 59.5 degrees. Now the only thing that I have to find over here is going to be side C. So of course I'm going to put little c right here to tell myself that I'm working on side C. And so what do I have to use? Let me go back and take a look at the triangle. Um, to find side C, I'm going to have to use the law of sine. I have the opposite angle, and then I'm going to use the given. So just because I wrote 65.5, you might think that I might want to use sine B over B, but always use the given because you got to remember when you got 65.5, that wasn't really um, an exact answer. We rounded it, right? So our answer is going to be off if we use numbers that are not exact. So start with the given, which is 55 degrees and um, the opposite side, which is 27. So let's start with that. Sine 55 degrees over 27 is equal to sine 59.5. That's what we just found right here, right? Over C, because opposite measure, um, opposite angle C is side C. Again, same thing, cross multiply. So C times sine 55 degrees is equal to 27 times sine 59.5 degrees. And of course, this time you want to find C, right? C is what we want. So we're going to divide both sides by everything. That's sine 55, okay? And just that makes things easy. This cancels out. So now we know that C is equal to all of that, which I'm going to plug into my Desmos calculator. My writing's getting sloppy. So let's go to my handy dandy calculator. And I'm just going to put it in the way I see it, which is 27 sine 59.5 divided by sine 55. And then you can see your answer is 28.4. Okay, so let's go back. So I'm going to put right here, C is 28.4. So now we have all our answers, and I told you at the very end, you have to list all my answers, okay? So there you go. We have measure of angle A, and that was 55. That was given to us, right? And measure of angle B. Make sure you put it in alphabetical order. That was 65.5 degrees. Measure of angle C was 59.5 degrees. And then side A was given to us. Side B was given to us. And C was the only one we had to find, right? Um, so I feel like I'm done with my answer, but I'm not, you see? Guess what I did not do when I started solving this problem? It says clearly in the question, it says determine the number of triangles she can form. What does that mean? That means that with this dimension, she could actually have uh, zero triangles or just one triangle or two triangles. And when we learned about the law of signs, we already talked about how uh, the SSA triangle being a tricky one. It's a high maintenance triangle, right? So we had to think, when we found the measure of angle B right here, right here, we got 65.5 degrees. And so we talked about this in class, right? Um, so we have the unit circle, right? Yes. We have the unit circle, and we talked about how 
For the values of sine, if we have an answer over here, the value of sine is going to be the same as the value of sine over there. Unfortunately for our calculator, they're only going to give us the answer from this side. Because that's just how it's set up, right? With the capital letter S, that's what the um, calculator gives us. But because we have brains, we're talking about triangles, we know that we could have angles that are bigger than 90 degrees, right? So we know that we could have an answer right here, this angle right here. the yellow angle, right? So we talked about this. In order to figure out if we have a second triangle, all we have to do is we use the measure of angle B and subtract it from 180 degrees because this straight line down here, this is 180 degrees, right? So if we go this 180 minus the reference angle, which in our case is going to be 65.5 degrees, then we'll be able to figure out how big this yellow angle is, right? So we're going to go. So we realize that this is the measurement for what? Triangle number one. Okay. So now we know that we have to work on triangle number two. Ah, oh, so much work, right? So let's go ahead and move on and work on triangle number two. Okay. So there you go. We have triangle number two. And so what we're going to do is we already have the measure of angle A, which is 55 degrees. And then for the measure of angle B, that was what we did. Our previous answer was 65.5. So what we're going to go do is 180 minus 65.5 because that's going to give us the measure of the other angle that the calculator will not give us, which is 114.5 degrees. So over here, this yellow angle is going to be 114.5 degrees, okay? That's why we need our calculators so they could calculate um, accurately, but then we really need to use our brains to make sure that all the, you know, we apply different situations correctly, okay? So now once we have the measure of angle B, uh, now we are ready to find the measure of angle C because now we have a triangle and we got, you know, uh, angle A and we also have angle B. Actually, am I? Yeah. Because we have angle A, A was here. And then we have angle B. So it's easy for us to find the measure of angle C now, right? So how are we going to do that? Well, when we add all three angles in the triangle, it's going to be 180 again, right? And we're going to subtract that from these two, which is A plus B, and 55 was given to, to us, the measure of angle A, and the measure of angle B is 114.5 degrees, okay? So now let's work on this, 180 minus, when you add this, you get 169.5, and when you subtract those two, you get 10.5 degrees. So with the dimensions that was given to us, this angle and the opposite side A, well, now, and, and this side, now we know that we can have two triangles, right? Um, one of the triangles is going to look like this with measure of angle B really fat and measure of angle C really, really skinny. Something like that, I would think, right? Like that. And then another triangle would be just measure of angle A, B, and C, kind of, you know, being just normal because A was still 55, but, you know, B uh, was 65 degrees over there. And over here, measure of angle B was super, super big, right, like this, really, really wide, 114 degrees. And measure of angle C was really tiny, 10.5. Over here, measure of angle C was, um, if you look over here, 28.4, still bigger than this angle, right? Okay, so what's the remaining side that we have to find for the second triangle? Yes, we have to find the measure of side C, right? I know that this is difficult. Well, it's not really that difficult if you, you know, think about it. So to find side C, we're going to do the same thing. So we were talking about how now this triangle kind of looks like this, right? Like that. It's A, B, and C. So we already have the measure of angle A and the opposite side, which is 27, right? And so we're just going to use that. Sine 55 degrees over 27. And that is equal to, we just found the measure of angle C, which is 10.5 degrees, right? And we're going to use that to find the measure of 
side C. Cross multiply. C times sine 55 degrees equals 27 times sine 10.5 degrees, right? Again, don't forget we're trying to find C, so we can go ahead and just divide both sides by sine 55.